Hi, I'm Tommy. Welcome to Photo Tips on AmateurLogic.tv. We're going to be going over some common uh, tips and tricks, techniques related to digital photography, whether you use a point and shoot camera or a digital SLR. Some of the tips and techniques that we're going to go over will actually be applicable. That's a tongue twister. Applicable to film. Uh, photography as well but we're going to mainly be focused on digital. One of the common problems that we normally run across is a white balance problem. That's probably the most common issue. If you've ever taken a picture inside and noticed that it has an orange or yellowish cast, generally that's because the camera didn't compensate or wasn't set properly for the white balance of the lighting in the room. Uh, in, interior lighting generally uh, uses incandescent or tungsten bulbs and that's that light usually gives off uh, an orange or reddish cast. To, to get a color balanced picture you need to compensate for that in the camera. Uh, a lot of cameras have automatic white balance compensation built into them but they don't generally uh, well I almost hesitate to say that some of them don't generally work very well, especially if you have mixed lighting. Say, for instance, you've in your kitchen area, you may have um, fluorescent lighting, and in the dining room area, you may have uh, tungsten, and somewhere in the middle, the light is mixing, and the white balance compensation has a hard time dealing with that sometimes. So if, you, if you've ever had pictures that didn't look quite right with the color balance, we're going to go over a couple of easy techniques that you can used to adjust that and make your pictures look more normal. Today we're going to focus on using some open source software to do our white balance adjustments. The software is called the GIMP. A lot of you are probably familiar with it. The GIMP is an open source package. It's freely available on the web. Um, you can download it and it doesn't cost you a thing. And, and it rivals a lot of the higher end professional packages in the output. Um, some people find the interface a little bit clunky, but uh, that's neither here nor there. Let's go on to our example. Here I've taken the same image with three different white balance settings on my camera. On the bottom left, I had the white balance set to auto. The top left, I had it set to tungsten. And the top right, I had it set to outdoors or daylight. And what we're seeing here is that the auto on the bottom left did not qu didn't quite make the grade when it was trying to compensate for the lighting. Um, it was close, but it but it didn't quite make it. The top left is the closest where I actually set it for the correct color temperature, the correct white balance, which was for the tungsten lighting I was using. And the top right, um, I knew when we took the picture that it was going to be purposely off. And you can see it's got quite a cast to it because it was set for daylight balance. Okay, since the daylight image we took is the farthest off, let's try to tackle it and uh, see if we can't get that white balance corrected. I'm going to load it up in the GIMP and let's do some editing and see what we can do. You have two tools in the GIMP that you can use. The first one we're going to try is the color balance. So it's under the tools menu, tools, color tools, and color balance will bring up the dialog. And you can see you have the range, uh, shadows, midtones, and highlights. You, this can be a little tedious as you have to adjust. So we, if we have too much yellow, we add a little blue and a little cyan till we get the color about where we want it. You're going to have to do this for the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows. You have the most control using this method, but it takes a lot of time. There are some built-in tools in the GIMP that will actually do this automatically for you if you know a white, uh, gray, or a black point in the image. And since I took the picture, I know that the white bound, the, I'm sorry, the background is supposed to be perfectly white. That method will, will actually work. It takes a lot of time and work, as I said, to make it to make your image exactly right. 
let's try a shortcut which I think you'll find most useful and, and I catch myself using it uh, more times than using the color levels. We're going to go to the tools, tools menu, color tools again, and the levels dialog. We can pick from, we have the option of choosing a white point, a black point, a gray point, but we're going to stick with the white, like I said, since I know the background was white. If you take the eyedropper and click it on what was white, it does all the hard work for you and not, not a lot of that sliding around of the dialog, uh, of the sliders on the dialog, I mean. And um, anyway, that's pretty much it. It's, it's uh, so simple. Download the GIMP from the URL below and give it a try on some of your images that may have a white balance problem. I'll, remember, always try to adjust your white balance for the correct lighting. Uh, refer to your camera manual and you'll get the best results but if you don't the GIMP can help you get those straightened out thanks for watching and uh, in some of the upcoming episodes for the photo tips we're going to be doing some moving to some techniques later we got a few more coming for software tweaks and then uh, we may try to do some bad weather photography and you know lightning photography things like that if the weather cooperate with us so uh, keep watching, and uh, I think you'll find some interesting and fun things coming up in the near future.